Greg, welcome to Sydney. Glad to be here. Um, first off, I wanted to start this by uh, asking you to take me back to when, um, at the years following the room, at what point did it dawn on you that this was a career-making experience and you needed to write a book on it? So the room came out in 2003. Tommy spent the next few years paying a theater to show once a month, which college kids would show up to and ask bizarre questions and throw spoons at the screen. And I thought that was it. I thought it's cool. Tommy put his movie out there. Few people showed up. I moved on. I moved to Europe and was like modeling and doing other things. And then it wasn't until 2008 that I got a call from an entertainment weekly reporter mm -hmm. who had just seen the film and called it the best cinematic experience of his life with 60 people throwing spoons and shouting at a screen. He felt like he had to write an article about it. And he went on to say that it was being studied in universities and there was a celebrity fan base. And after that article was released, it just kind of blew up. It was showing in London, um, started showing in Melbourne, actually. Um, and I just got a lot of questions, you know, like, why did you do this film? What was it about? What's the point of it? Really just like one big why. Mm -hmm. um, and it dawned on me that the story behind the room to me is even more bizarre and hilarious in a lot of ways than, than the room, actually. Yes. Uh, Tommy and I were roommates. We knew each other four years before uh, the room was made. We were met in an acting class, mm -hmm. ironically. And it was really about two friends following their dream and ending up making this insane film. And I felt mm -hmm. like as a lover of Hollywood stories and movies, uh, I was kind of inspired by Ed Wood and Sunset Boulevard to tell a story that I felt like could inspire people. And, and the book, uh, I've read it, it's very honest and very, very hilarious. Um, how did it impact your relationship with Tommy? Because it's very detailed. Yeah, um, I told Tommy a few years before that I was going to write a book and I mm -hmm. interviewed him about his life and his thoughts coming to San Francisco. Uh, trying to be an actor before I met him. Um, and I really wanted to tell a story that I felt like would would honor that and not shrink from the darker moments of, of that experience. And so the book came out and he called it the Red Bible. Um, and then he said he approved of it 40% because he wasn't crazy about the making of the room chapters because he feels the room is a great film. Why I feel it's a great film for different reasons, but ultimately he he, he accepted the book and he loves the film adaptation. Uh, you know, we both are big fans of, of James and Dave, so it's all worked out. I think. Hmm, what a story. <laughs> um, you know, when you were filming the room, that there, there was there were. It's just, there's a lot to unpack. What, aside from the money, what made you put your trust in Tommy and see this through? Um, it was really just somebody that I saw as needing a friend. Um, I, I understood Tommy, you know, I think better than most people. And I really just wanted to try to help him finally get a shot at being an actor. Um, and that was really what I hoped to do. And there was something about being on set with this group of people and trying to realize this vision that was oddly fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, going to set and watching him try to shoot himself was something you just couldn't believe you were watching. Um, so there's a lot of aspects in there, but ultimately I just wanted to try to help him make his film.